And the first algorithm that we will see is an algorithm called k-means. The k-means algorithm is one of the simplest clustering algorithm. It's a heuristic algorithm. You see here in the map, it's heuristics. It means that it doesn't really get us or it doesn't guarantees it doesn't guarantee that it can give us the best result, the optimal result as we call it. But we know that the result is quite good. Okay. So let's now review this algorithm. Uh, as in, from the family of clustering algorithm, it belongs to a subfamily called partitional. It means that it makes partitions, right? It, uh, it is, um, make just the groups, it shows the groups, it doesn't so show hierarchies. So it's just the, the uh, breaking all data sets into groups. No hierarchies. Other clustering algorithms that we'll see in the future do also hierarchies. And here, what you see here is like the explanation of this algorithm in natural language, in English. Each cluster is associated with a centroid, it's a central point, and each point is assigned to the cluster with the closest centroid. Okay, that's the main idea. The number of clusters, K, must be known, must be specified. So, now I very easily described how the algorithm works. Let's see that in action. And many times to see that in action we use pseudocode. It means this is the code, this is a, a kind of code that is written in, in, in natural language. And many times you will program or you will compose algorithms in this language. Pseudocode. English. And other software engineers and programmers will just implement that. So what is the algorithm? How, w what is the action that it does? It selects k points. k is the number of clusters. The correct, the divine number of clusters. We select k random points as the initial centroids, as the initial central points. And then we have some kind of a loop that repeats itself. And in each, each iteration of this loop, we will do two, comp uh, two, pr uh, 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 two tasks. One is that we will form clay K clusters by assigning all points to the closest centroid. So we will form groups around the centroids. And then we recompute the centroid of each cluster. It's a kind of um, way to um, not calculate the solution, but do some kind of trial and error. And we repeat that operation until the centroids don't change. Let me show you how it works. Maybe it will make more sense. So let's say we have only two variables, x and y, x and y, and all the patients are uh, shown here in this plot and we pick and k is three let's say so we pick just three random places three random centroids so as you can see this is centroid number one centroid number two centroid number three this is what we picked and then we form the clusters around those centroids so for each and every patient we ask we measure the distance to each and every centroid we ask what is, which is the closest centroid, and when we do this assignment, we say, okay, all of these are uh, the uh, data of this centroid. This is group number one, the red one. Group number two is this one. Group number three is the green one. Okay, that's easy. Very simple operations. But now we say, computer, computer. If this is what you claim is the true phenomenon, what God intended, then there will be no problem. 
to say, ah, okay, so this is the group, let's say, of the sick people. What is the centroid of this group? So we like go back and forth. So we will compute what, if I ask you, what is the true centroid of this group, of the blue group? Where is the central point? The central point, where is it? Probably around here. So what I say, I say, hey, let's move the centroid that was picked randomly to this point. But if I change the position of the centroids, then the assignments of all patients to their closest centroids will change. Let's see. I change the place of the centroid. And as you see, some patients that were blue are now red because of this change. And then I say again, I repeat, I say, computer, computer, if this is what you see, if this is what you claim, then I have no problem to readjust again the centroid to the real central point. And I will do that again. And back, I did that. I changed the places of the centroids. And then again, it changed the assignments of patients to groups. And this is the third iteration. And then I will do it again, and again, and again. And see that each time I did it, there was some change. And then I ended up with iteration five. I did it again. I changed the clusters. I changed the centroids, but the clusters didn't change. So I reached convergence. And now I can do it as many times as I'd like. There's, there will be no more changes. If there is one iteration with no changes, there will be no more iterations with change. So now this is fixed. And voila, I have here three, or, yes, three groups. And I did it only with six operations. Good? Wonderful, right? So I solved the clustering problem very, very easily with just six steps. Does it uh, always converge to a final solution? Yes. So it's mathematically it, proved that always... Uh, it's, it is mathematically proven that it always converges. The question is <laughs> whether that's the optimal result. What do you think? Is this the optimal result? It's heuristic algorithm. So it's heuristic, right. Why, how does it get wrong? Why, why is it wrong? You have to see what the price is when someone moves a group and what, what is the meaning for you. If, it's, uh, if you don't lose anything by someone moving a group, so it's okay. If, if the loss is extreme, like death or, or, or like diagnosing a disease or not diagnosing a disease, then, then... So yes, what you're saying is very high level and it's true, okay? I need to know how is it important to be, for me to be 100% accurate. In many cases, 90% accuracy is good enough, you are correct. But let's say, um, just for, for, for here, that I really want to be as accurate as I can be. And this is uh, definitely not the situation. And one of the reasons, one of the reasons that I, uh, that I already discussed about uh, last time from now was what? This algorithm is greedy. Right, because the, actually the initial points that I created here, that were picked randomly, they eventually are attracted, okay, to their final positions according to uh, a certain, let's say, the imaginary path, okay, that they go through. But if I pick them initially in another place, they will go through another path and potentially end up in a different place, in a different convergence. I hope you can see that. Yes? Uh, so this is an, a greedy algorithm. OK, so this is how you see the evolution of the clustering problem.
Um, so some analysis about this algorithm. Uh, and this is uh, by far the most uh, popular algorithm in many software that you use. You just click the clustering button. This is what you get. So initial centroids are often chosen randomly. Cluster produced a uh, vary from one run to another. So each run, when you click, you get different results, different information, different conclusion. Mm -hmm. The centroid is typically the mean of points of the points in the cluster. Closeness is measured by Euclidean distance, cosine similarity, correlation, etc. So we don't need to use just the Euclidean distance. We can use also other kind of distance formula. K-mean. K-means will converge for common similarity measures uh, mentioned above. Okay, so we will get convergence. Most of the convergence happens in the first few iterations, so that means that this algorithm is very, very uh, fast. Often the stopping condition is changed uh, to until relatively few points uh, change clusters. We don't need all the points uh, to be fixed. We can stop even a bit before that. And the complexity um, is very simple. Okay, I don't ask you to calculate it, but it's just the number of points times the number of clusters times the number of iterations times the number of attributes. This is a linear time. This is a linear complexity. There's no squared or, or a power or anything. So it's very fast. Yes? Maybe I missed something. How, how did you choose the number K? How did they choose the number K? I say, let's assume the number is K. The algorithm takes a specific number, it takes Yes, the algorithm needs an actual number, mm -hmm. and I and I don't know what is the number, okay? <laughs> so this is what I tell you. When you want, and in whatever um, scenario that we, you will need to do clustering, you will need to answer that question. The k-means algorithm does not answer that question. You have to introduce points. So you have to what? Uh, you have to give him that number. You have to give it the number, right. And maybe you have ways to, to know what is the right number. Maybe you don't. Maybe you have some other algorithms that will be able to assume what is the correct number. But the k-means algorithms and many other algorithms, they need to know the number of clusters. Okay. Now let's see some problems, and uh, I will ask you what is the cause of this problem. So when we try to uh, measure how algorithm is good, we have very uh, nice ways to do that using synthetic data. Synthetic data is a data that we uh, simulate, okay? And uh, this simulation enables us to measure things very accurately. So what we do here, we created these groups. So you see here the blue group, the red group, and the green group. And then we hid all the colors from the computer. So now everything is black. And we asked the computer to do clustering. And when the computer does clustering, and these are the clusters, the centroid that it found, this is the clusters that the computer created, or that the algorithm, the k-means algorithm created. So using synthetic data, you can see here that the computer did wrong. So using synthetic data is not as good as using real data, because it's synthetic. But if you fail in synthetic data, then most probably you will fail also with real data. And of course, measuring or knowing whether we failed or not in synthetic data is very easy. So the use of synthetic data is good. OK, so here we failed. Why did we fail? What is the reason that we failed? You see what we should have received? We should have re received three groups the blue one, the red one, and the green one, but they are different. So the reason that we failed is that each group here is of different size. And the way that the k-means algorithm works, where it says, you know, each, each data point will be to the closest centroid, 
does not, is not adequate to this kind of data set. Let's see another angle where there's different de uh, uh, density. So if this is the true uh, grouping, that is what we get from the algorithm. <laughs> what a face. <laughs> yes, very bad. So again, I remind you, when you take the statistical software and click the clustering button, many times you get wrong information, wrong conclusions. And uh, sometimes uh, data is not just uh, numerical data, sometimes it's, uh, it's image data, okay? And just think about, uh, you know, if we take some kind of, of imaging data or pathology or whatever, and we see shapes like we expect to see nature, uh, membranes or whatever, okay? And we do clustering. So this is the true uh, grouping, this is what we get with k-means. And this is, in this case, because the shapes are not globular. The idea of measuring just the distance is good for globular shapes, not for shapes that are not globular. So in one hand, this algorithm is good. On the other hand, we see problems. Just to say, that uh, clustering is a complete family of algorithms. As I said, there's the partitional uh, family and the hierarchical uh, family. Uh, we are here. We are in the k-means uh, algorithms. And uh, what we will do now is go to mixture resolving and expectation maximization. And this is in the context of the next chapter, which is the Gaussian mixture models algorithm. Wow.